SeqBuilder provides several options for translating DNA and RNA sequences to amino acid sequences, including full translations for all six reading frames, partial translations for a single frame based on selection, and the option to create a new translated sequence from a selection. You can also back translate protein sequences to DNA sequences using the back translate menu option. By default, SeqBuilder uses the standard genetic code for all translation and back translation options. If I go to Sequence, Select Genetic Code, you can see that standard genetic code is selected, but there are also several other genetic codes available for you to use. Here I'm going to show you an example of a case where you might want to use a non-standard genetic code. Here I've opened the protein sequence for human calmodulin from the laser gene demo data. Let's say I want to express the gene for this protein in E. coli. I might start by back translating this to a nucleotide sequence to be used as a target in a virtual cloning project. So if I select the entire sequence and then go to Sequence, New Sequence, Back Translate, SeqBuilder will create a new DNA sequence back translated from the protein sequence. However, you'll notice that this sequence contains many ambiguous bases. If I switch back to my protein sequence, and then select Sequence, Edit Genetic Code, we can see the amino acids and codons in the standard genetic code. On the left are all of the amino acids, and on the right are all of the codons that code for each amino acid. And this column shows the codons SeqBuilder uses for back translation. And you'll notice that most of these codons contain ambiguous bases. And that's because SeqBuilder is considering all of the codons for each amino acid. I'm going to close this and then go to Sequence, Select Genetic Code, and choose Strongly Expressed Non-Degenerate E. coli Back Translation Code. This is a genetic code that is optimized for expression in E. coli. Once I select that, I'm going to go back to Sequence, Edit Genetic Code, and you'll notice that this genetic code is actually identical to the standard genetic code, except the codons used for back translation do not contain ambiguous bases. And that's because this genetic code is optimized to only use the most abundant codons in E. coli for back translation. On the right, codons shown in black are used for forward translation but not back translation, whereas codons shown in red are used for forward translation and back translation. And because there's only one red codon per amino acid, we have a non-degenerate code. So if I use this genetic code for a back translation, I shouldn't have any ambiguous bases in the back translated DNA sequence. Before I show you that, I just want to mention that you can edit genetic codes from this dialog. So for example, if I want to include one of these codons for back translation, I just need to hold down the Alt or Option key and then click on the codon. And you'll see now the back translation codon contains an ambiguous base. To remove a codon, from consideration for back translation. Just hold down Alt or Option again and click on the codon. You can also change which codons code for which amino acids by dragging the codon to the desired row. And if I then click OK, my changes to this genetic code will be saved. Or I can edit the description field at the top and then click OK to save this as a new genetic code. But for now, I'm going to click Cancel and then I'm going to back translate my protein sequence using the newly selected genetic code. And now you'll see that the back translated DNA sequence doesn't contain any ambiguous bases. If you have further questions about modifying the genetic code in SeqBuilder or any other questions about our software, please visit our website, dnastar.com or contact us at support at dnastar.com.